Hello artists, welcome to your flamingo painting class. In front of you, you should have your canvas with a sketch of the flamingo, a paper towel, a larger brush, a smaller brush, a cup of water, a plate just in case you'd like to mix some of your colors. Also, white, black, brown, dark blue, pink, teal, light blue, and then you have your dark green and your light green. Some of the colors are very similar, so be sure you have your dark blue, your teal, and your light blue uh, separated in a way that you can tell which one is which. And then also you have your dark green and your light green. All right. Um, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to wash our two brushes by swirling them around our cup of water. And then just gently patting them onto our paper towel. So just wash and dry your brushes. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to paint my sand a very light brown and that's just by adding brown and white to my brush. I'm going to use the big brush, add a little bit of brown and I'm going to go in there and just kind of sweep some areas of brown in this area down here underneath this wavy line. So just side to side some brown with my big brush. You're still gonna see some of the white poking through. A little bit of brown to the left. Don't go above where that line kind of curves over. And then don't go past this area right here. That line would curve over. And you can even add some to the bottom as well. There you go. Once you're done, you don't even have to clean your brush. So I added a lot of brown on this bottom area of my canvas. I'm gonna jump to the white paint that I have. So a little bit of white paint. And then I'm just gonna sweep a lot of that white paint on top. If you feel like the two are not moving well together, add water to your brush, tap it, and then just kind of go over the two. If you want your sand to be lighter, add more white. So I'm gonna get mine a little bit lighter. Also, here in a moment, whenever you're ready, I do want you to go over your pencil line with a little bit of brown and white on your brush so you can kind of get rid of that pencil line from before. So I just took a little bit of brown and white and went over that pencil line so I don't see it anymore. Add more water to my brush. I'm just gonna tap this move this brush to the left and to the right. So brown, add white without cleaning your big brush. It's just that brown and white that are working together in the sandy area. And I'm getting the sides where it kind of curled over and the bottom too. So everything down here is just going to be this very light brown. If you do want it to be darker, you can add more brown, if you want it to be lighter, add more white. And that white is gonna white out to your line if you feel like you can still see it too much. And there's a nice sandy area. Again, don't forget about the sides where it curls over and the bottom. And be sure you're just kind of painting all the way from the left side to the right side, getting everything nice and covered, nice and smooth. Perfect. All right. And if you're not all the way done yet, you are welcome to pause the, t uh, the video at this point. But I am going to move over and uh, move on to my uh, sky. wash and dry wash and dry with my big brush I'm gonna continue on with my big brush I'm gonna go to that darkest blue and the top part is gonna be where it's gonna be the darkest and it'll get lighter and lighter and I'll add more white as I'm getting closer to this line I'll also paint the right side the left side and the top part and nice long sweeps left to right. So dark blue, 
side to side, mostly on this top part. Sorry, I got a little bit too much paint on there. I'm also going to get the left side. And I still have some white peeking through, that's fine. So the right side, the left side, ooh, excuse me, the left side, and then the very top of my canvas. I can really start there. Again, there's still some white peeking through on this top part. But I want to make nice long lines going left to right. Once I was done covering most of that space with a dark blue, I'm going to add some water to my big brush, tap it on the paper towel, just kind of go over it to smooth it out. And to really get into those areas of my canvas that I might have missed before. So you do want it to be covering up all that space above. This kind of line right here. It's a little bit thinner than a ruler's width or just about a ruler's width. So this is all dark blue. Without cleaning my brush, I'll go back to my white paint and just kind of grab a little bit. And I'm going to um, work my way down. But before I work my way down, I do want to just kind of go over my dark blue with just some sweeps of white. And then I can start kind of working my way down on both sides and even to the left and to the right, just adding more and more white. So I just overlapped over my blue, then I just kind of added more white to my brush. I do want to get this area underneath. It's kind of eek. And to the right. So I did kind of bring those blue sweeps with a little bit of white on them. And then once I was done adding some white to my brush, I'm not going to wash it, but I'm going to dip in the water, tap on my paper towel, and use my water as a way to kind of move my blue and white together a little bit better. And do your best not to get any paint on your flamingo, but if you do, that's absolutely fine. Sorry, my paint has a little bit of pink on it from my previous class. Again, be sure to overlap over your dark blue just a little bit with some sweeps going side to side. And you do wanna cover up all the space, including the left side and the right side where it curls over. And that water will definitely help. And if you need it to be lighter, you can add a little bit more white to your brush. If you need to be darker, you can add, add a little bit more of that dark blue to your brush. I'm just going side to side. Maybe start to the right of this flamingo. Get a little bit closer. Get that space a bit better. Use my water. And before I clean my brush, I do want to get the bottom part that's closest to this water area. I do want to get that um, a little bit lighter. So let me show you how in just a moment. So I have my dark blue, my blue and white. And then once I was done covering up this whole space, oh, let me check my sides. I'm sticking above that line. I'm gonna go back to more white. I'm gonna get a little bit closer to the line with the white so it's a little bit lighter. So more white. Again, about a ruler's width. Maybe come up into that medium blue a little bit more. If you need to, you can use your water. Tap on the 
paper towel. I should really get into those spaces close to my flamingo. Sweep it to the side. Nice long sweeps. They're a little bit too bright. All right. And the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to work in this water area. Um, if you want to go ahead and give this time, uh, this sky area some time to dry. But I am going to go in there with my teal, which is my darkest, uh, or excuse me, the one that's like, kind of like blue and green mix, my teal. I'm going to go in there with my light blue, and I will be adding some more white. So it's going to be more teal, more light blue, and more white, but a nice blend to there's some areas where they are working together. Again, be sure this area is pretty nice and dry before you move on, because if this touches this teal that we're about to put on, they'll start blending. So give it a couple minutes to dry. I'm gonna go back to my big brush, to that te really pretty teal, that blue-green color teal. I'm gonna go over my line. Again, do your best not to get it on the flamingo. I'm even gonna take that teal and curl it over to the left and to the right. Nice, long, smooth horizon line. And then I'm gonna come down, again, about a ruler's width or, or so, maybe a little bit less, kind of sweeping back and forth. Go back one more if you need to. Okay. Again, if you got some on your flamingo, that is totally fine. You can go back later and kind of fix it. Curls over to the side. Once you're done, do not clean your brush because we will be using this teal for the next step too. Nice, long, smooth lines. Be sure your paint looks nice and smooth. Sides, perfect. Um, once I was done, I'm not going to even clean my brush. It's my same big brush, that same teal. I'm going to dip it into the light blue, and then I'm going to make a line here to right here because I know that's where I want to kind of stop with having this much light blue on my brush and that over here and that over there so I didn't clean my brush it's that same big brush with teal I dipped into my light blue came closer to like the chest area of the flamingo and then I am going to kind of work my way up into my teal again be sure you don't have too much teal on there you can just wipe off if you feel like you have too much and work up from the line into my teal a little bit. Again, don't forget about the sides where that light blue curves over. Be sure everything looks nice and smooth. If you get too much teal on there, just gonna wipe it off. But you're going for that ombre look, that dark to light uh, to the light blue, and then it's gonna get really light when it gets closer to the sand. Here, and it's going to go out. I'm going to use my smaller brush, I think, for this smaller area. So a little bit of light blue. Squeeze in there a little bit. So I went and used my small brush to get that little area with some more light blue. there so it's easier to kind of sweep to the left from it.
again, be sure you have no white spots showing and that you've gone up into the teal a little bit too, but you can still see the darkest area of teal right there. And then don't forget about the sides too, curling over, kind of going into the teal as well. All right, and then don't clean your brush when you're done because you're gonna keep those on to your big brush. I'm gonna dip into the white. And then I am going to make an outline kind of over where my sand is with my brush that I just added white to, going above that sand line and you can drag your brush for kind of a smoother look. Don't forget about the left side where it curves over. Don't forget about the right side where it curves over. And then I'm gonna add more white to my brush. Might work my way up a little bit into that light blue. I'm just kind of moving my brush side to side and up into that, that lighter blue. You can always use your water if you feel like it's not moving well or they're not blending together well. Just going side to side, I'm just adding more white to my brush. And kind of going up on top of that lighter blue area. I am going to add some water. I think it'll help them work together a little bit better. So you have this area where they're, the light blue um, is working a little bit more with that white. Sweeping some on top of there. Right. Don't forget about the sides. And we'll let that area kind of dry for a little bit, but you should have your dark blue going into your lighter, kind of um, adding white to it, your teal, your light blue and adding white to it. And if you see any harsh lines like this one, you can just kind of go over it with your brush and just kind of sweep it with not too much paint on your brush and kind of smooth it out too. And I got lighter and lighter, and then I have my sand. Perfect. Um, so once you're done, go ahead and wash and dry your brush. I'm gonna, um, now that my sky is dry, I'm going to go in there and make um, uh, my palm tree. So just the top of my palm tree. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to use my smaller brush. And I'm going to use my darker of the two greens. My darker of the two greens. And I'm going to make two lines. Oops, let me make sure you can see it pretty well. And if you're not at this point yet, you're welcome to um, pause the video. I'm going to start in the corner and make one line coming down, about, about far down, with my darker green. So starting in the corner, coming down in a slant, like so. And then my second line, I'm going to start in the corner again and come out like a, the letter V coming out from the corner down. Once I've made those two lines, I'm pretty much going to make an upside down V on both lines. So with my small brush and my darker green, I'm going to come down and kind of sweep this way, half of my V, and then come back and make some more sweeps coming that way. And then I'm going to make a line kind of coming down and like that. 
So I made kind of like that upside down V shape with my dark green and then I made a line at the end to kind of finish it off. Same with this one. I'm going to come down to the left and make half of my upside down V. I'm just sweeping. Come down this way. Make the other half of my upside down V. And then I can make that line right there. Also, I'm going to not clean my brush again. I'm going to just ju jump into that lighter, limier green. And I'm going to do the same thing. And it's I'm not going to give any drying time. I want those two greens to work together. And I'm not going to make that first big V that I made before. I'm just going to do the upside down ones. And I'm just going to sweeping a little bit on top, a little bit over. You, you don't want to get rid of your... Um, dark green you just want these two to kind of work together if you need to go back for more dark green you can which I think I might just want kind of like that upside down V shape mm -hmm. okay so then I can go back and kind of do the same thing to the other one I'm just kind of sweeping I'm kind of flicking my brush Get those thinner ends to my palm tree. Like so. Go ahead and fill this one a little bit more up here. Maybe fill this one a little bit more over here, make them look a little bit more full. But keeping that idea of the upside down V and not forgetting about that line at the very end to kind of clean it up. Um, the next thing I want to do now that, um, let's see, this is nice and dry, is I do want to go ahead and go in there and start my flamingo. Be sure that the teal is um, nice and dry. Be sure that everything kind of surrounding your flamingo is nice and dry, but we can go ahead and start our pink, our pink flamingo. So once I'm done with my palm tree, and again, if you're not done yet, pause the tape. Be sure your small brush is nice and dry. I'm gonna dip into that pink that I have, so small brush pink paint, and I'm pretty much gonna outline the shape of my flamingo, but more sweeps where it's not like a solid color. I'm kind of going in there and make sure that teal is nice and dry because you don't want this teal uh, and the pink to to um, blend or to mix together. And I'm just making short choppy lines. Going all the way around my flamingo shape. Also, um, with the flamingo, you are going to have to make the wings. So um, the first shape you're going to make, or the one wing, you can kind of make this large kind of eyebrow shape. And then you're going to start here to the left again. Open up just a little bit and then come back and meet it over here. You are going to make two small rectangle shapes for the legs too. So... Um, Kind of coming down from here as one rectangle shape. Keep them pretty mini and two rectangle shapes. So they're pretty small rectangle shapes. And whatever you kind of have on your brush, I just go in there and just kind of follow the shape of my flamingo. Going all the way around my flamingo. Like so I'm just going to fill in that space. I still have a lot of white peeking through. So we can go in here, catch some of that pink. So I outlined it, I made the wing shape, I made the two rectangles, and now I'm going in and just adding some white, excuse me, adding some pink um, inside of the flamingo shape. Be sure your big brush is nice and clean. So we are gonna put away our small brush for now so you can wash and dry your small brush. And really clean that big brush and maybe even wrap it around with your paper towel. You're gonna dip it into that white paint, so be sure you have a nice clean white. So big brush, white paint. Be sure you don't have too much on there if it's coming off. Uh, once I'm done, I'm just gonna 
gonna go in there my pink and my uh, white are gonna work together and be sure to kind of go over those outlines you don't want to see them you can see them a little bit here and there but you don't want to have like a perfect outline around your flamingo shape you want it to look a little bit more realistic um, if you need to use the small brush at any point with white, you can go in there and kind of add some white to your brush, maybe in this area of the legs. And also, if you need to add water to your brush, tap it on the paper towel um, and then go over your pink and your white so they kind of work together a little bit better you can. This is going to take a, a little bit of time. You want to go in there and then break up some of the... The pink outlines. You want to go inside the wing shape as well. Don't completely lose that wing shape. You do want to break it up just a little bit. I'm going to add water now. Tap, tap, tap. You want your flamingo to be lighter add more white if you want your flamingo to be darker add more pink and then again you can use your small brush if you want to get into this area but if you feel like you can use your big brush just be super careful not to go out of those rectangular shapes you can still see a lot of that teal coming into your or the light blue coming into your flamingo shape. Let it dry a little bit more and just add more white to white it out. Drag my brush a little bit so I can get those nicer clean lines. So I'm gonna use my brush, drag it on the outside so it gets a little bit cleaner. And we are going to definitely let this dry a little bit before we put anything on it, like the eyes. And add a little bit more pink into this little thing. So you can definitely go back and forth and between the pink and the white if you wanted to make it darker and lighter. Okay, there we go. Once I was done, I was going to wash and dry my big brush. Wash and dry and go back to my small brush and work on those legs. So the legs are just going to be black in your small brush. Oop. I'm going to kind of twirl my small brush around. Get it to be nice and pointy. So I'm going to get a nice pointy small brush. Mine's been used a lot, so I'm going to kind of get it wet and bring it to a nice point by twirling my brush around. And remember, the harder you push on your brush, the thicker the lines become. So you do want these two black lines to be pretty thin, so just be on the tippy toe. I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna go all the way down. Oops, still have too much water on my brush. And then this one, so this one on the left just goes all the way down. The one on the right kinda goes down and then turns. So show you, it starts in the middle, down a little bit diagonal and then turns in this way like so there are those kind of little knobby knee areas where it does come out a little bit further and I'm just gonna come out a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right not too much you want the knobby knees area and then over here we come out a little bit to the left a little bit to the right like so. All right. I am going to start working on the beak area because I am giving some more time for the pink to dry before I put the eyes on there. Um, but for the beak, um, you can paint it white, especially if you want to get rid of these um, pencil outlines. Um, so if you do paint it white, uh, be sure it covers the pencil outlines and then be sure it's nice and dry before you add the black. Um, because if you that black is wet and the white is wet, it's going to make it a, um, a, a gray beak. So uh, what I do recommend is if you do paint it all white, then let it dry and then go back to this step. I'm going to make a line here, a line here, 
where the beak kind of folds so it kind of looks like a V shape very similar to the one we did for our palm tree and another one here and this one make another triangle shape and then turn it all black and it goes that way so it's a little bit of a diagonal line turn it up and down all right next i am gonna do the eyes do the eyes i'm gonna start off with black and my small brush again and the eye is pretty close to this point a little bit up into the right and keep it nice and small with the black you can always get bigger but you don't want to get too big too fast so it's my nice very small black circle once i was done i'm going to use the back of my small brush so not the part that has the bristles but the back give this a couple minutes to dry and then I would use the back of it with my white paint I just I got a little bit messy so I'm just gonna dip the back of my small brush in the white paint again wait for it to dry a little bit more than I'm giving it time to dry be sure it's not too shiny and I'm gonna make a dot on the top right corner by just pushing down on my brush A little bit of a boop, a little bit of a dot, mostly in the black area. You can come out a little bit into the pink area, but otherwise you are all set. There is your super cute flamingo painting. You can always go back and touch things up. Uh, just be aware if a wet color touches another wet color, it's going to mix and blend. So sometimes you just need some, uh, give some things some time to dry before you build on top or next to them. Awesome. Thank you so much, artists, uh, for joining our Flamingo class. I hope you had a great time, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.